Hello, everyone. Letting everybody get uh, get logged in here, and we'll get going in just a minute. All right, let's get started. We'll have a few more people who will uh, who will be joining us, uh, I think, as we roll forward. But let's get started. I'm Todd McCracken. I'm the president and CEO of the National Small Business Association. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we wanted to hold a, a, a member uh, call as soon as we could to, to talk about and answer your questions about our ruling on the on the uh, on the CTA, which was excellent news, we heard late in the day on Friday last week. We've, we've this week we've we've briefed congressional staffers. We've talked to the media. We've done um, special alerts. Uh, but we wanted to have some time where you all can ask questions as well and and find out directly from us and our lawyers what exactly happens and what it's going to mean for compliance with CTA for an SBA members, non-members, and others as we roll forward uh, and and what's going to happen next. Um, I'll talk a little bit more in a little bit, but I, I first want to turn things over to John Nyman, who's one of our uh, attorneys who did just a great job arguing in front of the court uh, in Alabama. He's uh, at, at, in John Birmingham, and I just want to give him a chance to do a quick brief on what, what happened and why, what it means, and, and kind of a little bit about where we go from here. Um, uh, I, I believe Tom Lee, who is our other lead attorney, uh, is likely to be joining us in a minute. He has he had a, con a conflict. We'll be here in a little bit, I think, and then we'll, we'll hear from him as well. Uh, John, maybe introduce yourself a little bit further and uh, and let folks know kind of what they need to know about this ruling. Uh, thank you, uh, Todd. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, lawyers uh, can talk forever, as probably many of you know. They certainly can talk forever uh, about cases uh, that they've won. Uh, so I'm going to try to keep this one as short as possible, uh, but still give you the details of uh, what we learned on Friday. Uh, it's been my great honor to represent uh, this uh, organization uh, and uh, one of its members, Isaac Winkles, in particular, uh, in the, the lawsuit that we filed against the federal government challenging the constitutionality of uh, the Corporate Transparency Act. Uh, many of you are probably aware of uh, the, the fact that we raised several claims against uh, the Corporate Transparency Act. Uh, the principal uh, argument that we raised in the complaint that we filed in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, which is where uh, Isaac uh, lives, uh, was that uh, the act is outside the enumerated powers uh, of of Congress, uh, in particular, uh, its power to uh, regulate uh, interstate commerce, which we said wasn't implicated uh, by the mere fact of uh, filing articles of incorporation or uh, 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 putting together an LLC on the state level. Uh, we also raised uh, several claims that the uh, Corporate Transparency Act violates the individual privacy rights uh, of uh, the persons who uh, form and own companies, in particular, their rights to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures, uh, their rights to um, uh, not be forced to uh, provide information uh, that will be used against them uh, in criminal investigations, uh, and their rights to uh, associate with people of their choice, uh, and uh, to not be uh, compelled to uh, speak when they, they wish to remain silent. Uh, we uh, worked with the government to put together uh, a schedule for the the court in Huntsville to uh, rule on these matters in uh, a manner that was unusually quick for uh, the, the federal courts. Uh, so we had in front of the court by last fall all the written briefing in the matter. The court scheduled a hearing uh, that we held in Huntsville uh, in November uh, that Todd was uh, able to attend uh, along with Isaac. Uh, we've had a few follow-ups with the court in the time since then. Uh, we had hoped that the court would rule uh, before January 1, 2024, which was the first effective date uh, for the Corporate Transparency Act. That was the date that applied uh, to uh, new companies formed after January 1, 2024, not to existing ones, but new ones. Uh, the court was not able to uh, get the opinion out before that date, uh, but we were sufficiently optimistic uh, that uh, the court had heard our arguments and was uh, uh, working very uh, diligently on a, um, a, a complex opinion uh, that we uh, stayed the course, uh, didn't ask the court to rule more quickly, 
Uh, and I think those that patience was rewarded last Friday when the court issued its order, uh, agreeing with us on the first point, finding that uh, the Corporate Transparency Act was beyond uh, the powers uh, of uh, Congress to enact. Uh, the court did not address the uh, other claims that we raised in the complaint, uh, the claims relating to the individual rights, uh, privacy-based rights of uh, persons who form and own companies uh, because the, uh, the, the ground on which the court rested was sufficient to declare the act uh, unconstitutional. Uh, the order on its, on its face applies only to uh, the plaintiffs who brought the lawsuit. Uh, so uh, the federal government is enjoined from enforcing the Corporate Transparency Act uh, against the plaintiffs. The federal government uh, on Monday, uh, the Department of, Treasure, uh, of the Treasury issued a notice saying that they are taking that quite literally, that they will not be enforcing the Corporate Transparency Act for the time being against Mr. Winkles, uh, against the NSBA, and against anyone who was a member of the NSBA as of the date of the court's order, uh, March 1st of 2024. But the implication of the government's announcement is that it will continue uh, enforcing the CTA against uh, people and entities that were not plaintiffs to the, the action. Uh, we expect uh, an appeal from the government. Uh, I, I, we also expect that there will be further developments uh, in terms of uh, the government's position on who uh, will be covered by the court's injunction and who will not be covered by the court's injunction. But as of now, we don't have clear answers uh, to any of, of those questions. Um, so that's kind of where we sit right now. Uh, maybe uh, I'll turn things back over to Todd to offer his comments on those developments. Yeah, thank you, John. And that actually was, if there is a disappointment here, that's that's what it is. And that is that we we hoped and somewhat expected that given that a federal court had ruled that the law was unconstitutional, that Finson would do the right thing and, and announce that it was going to suspend enforcement of the CTA altogether uh, until all these issues were finally resolved. Uh, uh, through the process that is likely still ahead of us as this goes to appeal um, in all likelihood. Um, they chose not to do that, which I, I, which in our view only adds confusion uh, to the mix. Um, a lot of the media that's been reported out there has not mentioned that technicality. Uh, and a lot of folks who are reading about this in the general media uh, have the clear impression that the law has been struck down in its entirety for everyone. Um, and so, um, but that reality in and of itself may conceivably force FinCEN to think about uh, that rule and go back and, 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 and change it. Uh, I should add here before we get too far into the, our discussion that if you do have questions about this, but I think the, the best thing to do, we have a little bit of a moderated Q&A at the end um, is to, uh, is to uh, put your questions in the chat. We'll try to consolidate because there'll probably be a lot of the same questions as people are going to have. Um, but uh, uh, here's, I, I think I, I'll sort of jump out over the question that I keep getting asked, John, that maybe you can help to uh, elucidate here, which is uh, how and, and will, as, if there is an appeal of this decision, um, obviously we made a lot of points that weren't um, uh, covered that the that the that the that the Alabama court did not rule on at all because the 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 powers of Congress question were sufficient to, to find it unconstitutional. What happens to those 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 points? Are will are they likely to be considered as in the future as as this as this uh, case moves forward? I, I, the answer to that question, Todd, I think is yes. Uh, and it's just a matter of uh, really uh, two issues. Number one, uh, if the courts uh, just continue to side with us on this question of Congress's powers, it will never be necessary for them to address the individual rights issues. Uh, the second uh, question really turns on, on what the courts uh, decide to do in terms of their discretion to reach out and address additional issues. I would anticipate that the government will appeal. 
that the government will contest the district court's rationale uh, that Congress uh, did not have power to enact the, the Corporate Transparency Act, that we will then file our response. Uh, in our response, we will defend the corporate, uh, or excuse me, the district court's rationale uh, in terms of Congress's enumerated powers, but we will also tell the appellate court that it can uh, affirm the district court's judgment on the additional grounds that, for example, the Corporate Transparency Act violates the Fourth, Fifth, and, and First Amendment rights of uh, persons who uh, own and uh, form uh, companies uh, in, in this country. Uh, the, the appellate court won't be required to consider those issues. Uh, it can either rule for us on the enumerated powers point, and at that point, the question will be whether the U.S. Supreme Court will step in, or it can rule against us on the enumerated powers point and say that it wants the district court, the trial court, to consider the privacy rights issue in the first instance. But I do think that our position will be that the 11th Circuit can, which is the appellate court, uh, that it can, can it can affirm the district court's judgment on the privacy-based grounds as well, and I would anticipate that we'll be asking it to do so. Okay, excellent. Thank, thank you, John. And I, and there's uh, a lot of the confusion that is that's that has, that has been created by what FinCEN has done in response to this ruling um, isn't just for non-members of NSBA, but also members of NSBA ourselves. We get lots of questions, and there's some of them in the chat right now about well, what happens? I I you know, I may have joined an SBA through company A, but I also own company B. And I have multiple entities. They're not all members of an SBA. Do they, does, is there an exemption here or not? I mean, is there a way for us to have answers to those? And are we going to, and who can provide clarity to those? Will Finson provide clarity for those? Uh, those are great questions, uh, some of which we've considered, some of which uh, we have not. What we know right now is simply what the government has said uh, and the government's uh, the, 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 the language of the government's uh, announcement is on the Department of Treasury website, and it, by its plain terms, simply says that NSBA members, as of March uh, 1st, 2024, right. uh, will not be um, uh, subject to the, the Corporate Transparency Act unless and until uh, the district court's decision is set aside. So uh, certainly, if one of your companies uh, is a, a member of the NSBA, uh, then that company uh, can take advantage of that announcement by the federal government and, frankly, the, the court's ruling. Uh, if, you, if you have another company that is not a member of the NSBA, and I'm not even sure, Todd, whether it's individuals are members of the NSBA or the, the companies are, but it if you have another is, company that's- Actually, is the company. Okay. If you have another company that's not a member, I think- uh, the, the safe course of action is to assume that the federal government will take the position that that company is subject to the CTA. Isn't it likely, though, John, and, and I, I just see that, that Tom Lee has, has joined us as well. So, Tom, feel free to uh, offer up any thoughts you have on these questions as well, um, or any other stuff that we've, we've brought up. But isn't it likely, as this rolls forward through a, a, the likely appeals process, that this this NSBA only exception will go away. Either we will lose eventually and the CTA will apply to everyone, or we will win and CTA won't apply to anyone. Isn't that the likeliest outcome as we move forward? Well, ultimately, and not this, and not this weird netherworld we're in right now. Yeah, ultimately, yes. I, I, there is, I think, about zero chance that the federal government will not appeal the ruling. Uh, and ultimately, I think the U.S. Supreme Court will decide up or down whether the Corporate Transparency Act is constitutional or unconstitutional. If the Supreme Court rules that the Corporate Transparency Act is unconstitutional, that ruling will apply to everyone in the United States. Uh, so that much is clear. I, uh, one big question, Todd, really concerns the timing of when we will get uh, some sort of ruling that that puts everybody on equal standing. I do think that it's possible that the government will file a motion with either the trial court or the court of appeals or even the Supreme Court eventually seeking a stay of the injunction while the appeals process plays itself out. Mm -hmm. uh, we would 
uh, it, we would object to that motion, but the purpose of that motion would be to set aside the injunction until we have a definitive resolution from the appellate court. If some court were to grant that motion, then all of a sudden this injunction that the NSBA has obtained would be put on ice uh, until we have a ruling from either the appellate court or uh, the Supreme Court. Uh, so we will keep everybody posted on whether such a motion is filed uh, and what the courts end up uh, doing with that. But everyone should be aware that there's the possibility of some court ruling in the relatively near term that changes up uh, the status quo that we currently have. Okay, thank you very much. And before we get to other Q&A, uh, maybe uh, Tom Lee, if you were there, could you turn on your camera and your microphone and, and add any other any other commentary you want to add that maybe we haven't addressed or that you haven't heard at least? Sure, Todd. Um, apologies. I, I joined about 12 minutes late. So I didn't hear the, the opening, but um, I, I, everything John said seems on the money to me. Um, you know, if we prevail at the 11th Circuit, um, it would apply across the 11th Circuit, right? Um, but it really, it, which is not just Alabama, Georgia, and, and Florida as well, but um, currently, um, I mean, and, and it it but would it would require a Supreme Court ruling for it to be unconstitutional throughout the country to everyone. Excellent. Uh, all right. Well, then, Molly, maybe I'll, I will uh, turn it to you to kind of moderate some Q and A. What if you if you had a chance to kind of look at some of these questions in the chat and and let us know what what wouldn't seem to be kind of consensus questions first off. Yeah, we, we've gotten quite a few questions. Um, one question, and, and I think maybe, John, you've already kind of referred to this, but somebody said that, you know, they're an LLC. So one company is a member of NSBA, but the other isn't. So how does how is that going to be treated? The, the short answer is that I think that the government's announcement on its face would apply only to an NSBA member. So an LLC that's an NSBA member uh, would be able to seek refuge in the government's assurance that it does not consider uh, the, the, the CTA to be enforceable against that LLC. But uh, I don't think it's safe for an LLC that is owned by someone who, whose other LLC is an NSBA member. I don't think it's safe to assume that that other LLC uh, is 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 going to be able to take advantage of the injunction for the time being. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question was um, asking about: uh, Is there an update on the delay in the Senate, the bill that's kind of hanging out there to to slow this down? Um, so, Todd, I don't know if you want to kind of give a general legislative. Here's here's what we're working on. Uh, sure, we actually have been working before this ruling even came out on 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 other ways to sort of uh upend or delay the cta um there's a bill that actually passed the house late last year that would that would delay implementation by a year of the cta there's a similar bill in the senate we've been trying to get it on the floor i think it has broad bipartisan support um it's not clear to us yet politically whether this ruling um, helps us or hurts us uh, in terms of getting that onto the floor and moving forward. But 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 those other things are happening at the same time. So we're trying to move to get a legislative solution that would actually just at least punt for at least a year, uh, which would give some breathing room for all this to get settled and uh, and uh, uh, allow us to end some of the confusion. Um, I, I think those are the arguments that will be more persuasive at this point. But 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 we'll see. There has been no movement since the ruling, however. Um, and there's still a couple of senators who are who have holds on the on the bill in the Senate, I believe. So, hopefully, we can get that sh shaken loose and, and and taken care of, so there's not so much confusion. Okay. Um, this next question, I think, is for either John or Tom. Uh, assuming the appeals process begins, how long might it take to get to the Supreme Court? Yeah, I mean, um, it's going to take some time um, after the final judgment in the appellate court. Uh, the government has 90 days. Um, the Supreme Court goes into recess over the summer. So I, I can't imagine um, it wouldn't be calendared to be argued at earliest in late 2024. Um, again, as John said, 
there is the possibility that the government will move for a stay pending final adjudication, um, in which case, mm -hmm. um, if they prevail on that, um, the injunction would, would be lifted um, until the Supreme Court decides. But I mean, I, I can't anticipate even, I mean, it, you know, when would we expect a Supreme Court ruling? It, it would probably be sometime in 2025. <laughs> Okay. This is kind of a, a technical question, probably one for you, Tom. Uh, what if the company is registered in a different state and not in the 11th district? Does the injunction still apply? The answer is yes. If you're a member of an NSBA and you're in some other state, then it, it does apply to you. So, so you don't you do not have to report. <laughs> Um, next question. I manage over 150 corporations for my real estate clients and serve as their authorized agent. Does, is he going to have to comply or, or is he exempt because he's a member and all those other companies are, are kind of under him? So, so is this sort of a, a holding company that's a member of NSBA and, and they own other entities because the reporting, yeah. Over. Yeah, a Anthony Luna, if you want to add some additional details in the chat, then we can try and address that question. Um, there was also a question about um, class action and and is there a way to move this into the class action and how how would that impact this case? John, do you want to answer that? Because we have been thinking about these types of other um, possibilities. Yeah, I think uh, everyone certainly should be uh, uh, looking out for possible news of a class action I, I do not think it would be possible for us to convert our current case into a class action. We now have a final judgment from the court in joining the statute's operation as to our clients uh, and these plaintiffs. And it's uh, not the proper stage, I think, to seek a certification of a nationwide class. Uh, that said, I have to believe that there is momentum out there uh, for all these other entities that are not covered by uh, the, the the court's order to find some way to get similar relief. The most obvious way would be uh, a class action. We don't know of any that has been filed, and we don't know of any that are currently uh, in the works. But uh, that's a distinct possibility that uh, we'll 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 be keeping our eyes open for, and we'll be keeping membership uh, apprised of. And, and one additional point there. I mean, we had debated how to proceed with this lawsuit. And you, you all have to remember, um, we filed this in November of 2022, right? So we were we were very quick out of the gate, um, so to speak. And the class action has the advantages of avoiding this kind of limited relief situation, but there are additional procedural hurdles you have to clear to bring a class action. Uh, you, 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 you know, it has to be certified. There are certain requirements. And so we had decided that it was more important for us to proceed as quickly as possible, as efficiently to pos as possible to get a merits judgment. That's exactly what we've done. So th those were choices that we made on the front end as we um, proceeded with the, the the lawsuit. But now, you know, it's all over the, the new circuits. And I, I would anticipate there will be um, copycat litigation coming down the pike. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I know that we've talked about this um, uh, quite a bit, but I, I think I, I've gotten several questions. So, Todd, if you can just kind of touch on the fact of, you know, if you join today, if you weren't a member last Friday, but you joined today, are you covered? Uh, our advice is no. The, the announcement from FinCEN that came out on late Monday says that they will follow the court's ruling and not uh, enforce the CTA on on. NSBA and companies that were members of NSBA as of the ruling March 1st, 2024. So, um, you know, we could at some future date potentially argue for a different treatment, but I don't think any members should do anything otherwise assume that they would be treated that way by joining after that date. I think only, only members who were there March 1st can assume that protection at this point. And just a clarification, um, if if your corporation or LLC or S corporation was in existence prior to January 1st, um, 2024, then you actually have until the end of the year, right? So so um, the people who would be sort of on the hook would be non-members who 
form new corporations after January 1st, 2024, right. you, you are supposed to, to, to file your information by April right. 1st. So that's the, that's the one group. So, so if you were in existence um, prior to, you know, on December 31st, even 2023, then, then even if you're not part of the, the NSBA, you, you don't have to file under the FinCEN's own rules until the end of this year. So um, it, it might be worth it for you to wait if you're in that, if you're in that boat. Thank you. Uh, another question along those lines, Todd, and this is something for you to cover. If you were a member previously, but then didn't renew with NSBA, would you still be covered? And I, my assumption is that that's based on the year membership, right? So if you were, you started your membership in, uh, you know, November 2022, didn't renew by November 2023, then you would not be covered. Is that correct? That's, that is my, that is my reading of, of the announcement. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's a question. Have you heard of an enforcement mechanism for FinCEN? Will it fall under IRS penalties? Uh, an, an enforcement mechanism for what? For the... uh, an enforcement mechanism. Oh, for, oh, not... for, for noncompliance with yes, CPA? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do believe IRS is charged with, with, with the enforcement, but the penalties can include um, imprisonment. So that goes beyond, obviously, the IRS. Another question asks, uh, will or was a list of NSBA member companies furnished to the government? Uh, no, uh, and and it has not been requested. I, I, I sus We don't know this, I don't believe. And, and John or Tommy, if you have a, a view on how, the, how this might happen, um, let us know. But uh, uh, my assumption is that if a company claims they don't need to to comply because they're members of NSBA, the government will ask for some sort of evidence or proof that they're a member of NSBA. That member will come for, uh, to us, and we would we would furnish that to the extent we could. Shifting gears for this question, um, should we continue to email our senators to delay? Absolutely, <laughs> early and often. Uh, yeah, I, I think it is the. I think a, a congressional delay. I think is is politically feasible and it's probably the cleanest way to clear up some of this immediate confusion in the marketplace that Benson does not elect on its own to uh, reconsider and announce a, a general suspension of enforcement. It's, it's, up, to, it's up to FinCEN. Our... Yeah. So it's up to FinCEN. So, so, you know, I mean, we had thought there was a chance before that announcement was re released that FinCEN as a matter of their policy enforcement discretion would say like look um we're gonna we're gonna put the whole program on ice but FinCEN chose not to do that so so telling your your representatives in congress that you know i guess the hope it would be that they would sort of lean on on secretary yellen and and her her um enforcement staff at FinCEN to say hey um let's reconsider this you're, you're causing mass confusion and and frustration and and disappointment for a lot of your constituents our, our constituents here and so put some pressure on FinCEN to reconsider this enforcement decision thanks I, I did want to mention our government affairs team has an action alert up on our website uh, if you go to nsba.biz um, look under issues or there's a button up there for action alerts click on that and we'll make it really easy um, all you have to do is type in your information if you've already done an action alert, which hope action alert hopefully everybody has your information will be saved in there and it'll be really easy for you to um, send that letter right on up to the hill so we encourage you to do that and I know that Sean has been putting a bunch of links into the chat she will include a link to the action alert there in the chat as well um, I did get uh, another question, I, and I think we've kind of touched on it a little bit, um, but just to uh, clarify, so um, you're an NSBA member as of March 1st. Um, does that mean you don't have to comply at all or it's just delayed or just, I mean, that kind of depends on what happens with the appeal process. Can you clarify that a little bit? Uh, your last answer, Molly, I think is the right one. It depends on what happens with the appeals process. As of now, all we know for sure is that the obligation to comply is is delayed. Uh, assuming that we win at every stage going forward, uh, there will never be an obligation. But if uh, either the court were to put the injunction on ice, as Tom puts it, uh, or uh, reverse what the trial court has done here at the 11th Circuit level or at the Supreme Court level, at that point, uh, the obligation to comply with the Corporate Transparency Act would be reinstated. Okay. So our goal is to win this thing. 
Thanks, John. The uh, uh, just kind of a general statement is, uh, and I think this gets to a bigger issue of, you know, small businesses don't know about this. Do you know of anything from FinCEN, any kind of like active outreach that they're doing to small business, any kind of proactive steps they're taking to to make sure that small businesses know about this? Todd, maybe you want to. I, I believe they've done some webinars. Um, but a broad based meaningful outreach to the tens of millions of entities that are covered. Uh, no, I don't think that exists. And I don't believe they have plans for such an outreach. Okay. I think we've gotten to the bulk of the questions that have come in. I'm, I'm seeing a couple others pop in right now. Um, um, so I, I do appreciate those comments that you're sending in. If I haven't asked your question, I think it's because we've covered it already. Um, but if you do have additional questions, feel free to shoot those to me, uh, mday at nsba.biz. Um, I think a lot of you know Ian. You can also email him, and we'll make sure that you get your information um, as much as or as, as quickly as we can get back to you. Um, for leadership council members, yes, you are full NSBA members. So um, you're com Anthony, you're completely covered. Uh, you guys should be good. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, too, Todd, um, John, and Tom. Tom, if you have any parting comments. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll see if John and I have anything to they want to wrap up with. But the thing I want, mostly want to say is, is, is uh, while this is a great win for us, it's, it, is, it is the beginning of, of, of the road, really, uh, even though we've been, <laughs> we filed this suit almost a year and a half ago. Um, there's still a ways to go before we have perfect clarity. And I wish it was a crisp, clean moment uh, of, of, a victory, and while it's a very significant and it's a big win, the game's not over yet. Uh, is the bottom line, uh, and so uh, please, please stay tuned. Tom, John, anything else you want to add before we before we wrap up? We're gonna just we're just gonna keep fighting. <laughs> we're gonna keep fighting for you all the way. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And I would add that it, it's been a real honor to represent. Uh, this uh, association and this group of of businesses, uh, we are grateful for the opportunity. Um, and I also I really admire the NSBA's willingness uh, to to be out there and making these claims. There were not; it wasn't like uh, before uh, this lawsuit was filed. There were a bunch of organizations that were willing to step up and and tell Congress that it had done something that was unconstitutional. So kudos to this organization and each of you be, for being willing to. Stand up for everybody's rights. Well, thank you, thank you, John. And and I, I sh should uh, if, uh, not to be a mutual uh, compliment society, but I but I but I was able to be at the oral arguments, and I just want to let members know also that they would have been really proud of the really s stellar job that uh, our team did in presenting the arguments before the court. I'm sure that's going to continue, but it was um, it was uh, they put together a really comprehensive um, presentation and were prepared for every single obscure question the judge could throw at them and gave clear convincing and obviously winning answers. So uh, thank you both. And thank you for the rest of the team as well. Um, so with that, thank you all for being with us. Stay tuned. This is, as I said, this is not the end. This is really in some ways an update on where we stand. And if you have more questions, uh, please send them to us. Uh, we'll do our best to compile a, a good, uh, in our Q and a for, for folks, because uh, obviously the, the the FinCEN and and uh, the response to this ruling has just created probably more confusion than than we needed to create. So anyway, uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your afternoon, and we'll be talking to everybody. Thanks for being here.